Welcome back to another exhilarating episode of World of Faceting Machines. Today we're looking at an early American faceting machine built by William Cross of Portland, Maine. William Cross was a manufacturing jeweler who opened his workshop in Portland, Maine in 1908. His workshop built a lot of their own jeweler's tools, so it's likely that they built this machine in-house. Its design is based upon the faceting machine first developed by Maine tourmaline miner and cutter Lauren Merrill in 1888. It's not known exactly when Cross built this machine, but he was definitely using it by 1924 when he faceted a tourmaline for his daughter's Sweet 16 ring. The machine is based around a brass arc that has regular angles marked on it from 0 to 90 degrees. By adjusting this angle slider, Cross could cut a facet at whatever angle he chose to. He could go all the way down to 0 degrees to cut his girdle, but it's interesting to note that this machine has a 45 degree table adapter for holding the dot to safely cut the table. This is one innovation that we don't see in Lauren Merrill's 1888 machine. Another unique feature of this machine is its use of a design-specific metal index gear. Unlike today's faceting machines, which have many teeth and can be used for a variety of designs, this index gear has an index notch for each of the facets needed for a brilliant design. Here we can see three rings of holes. The outside ring cuts eight star facets, the middle ring cuts eight main facets, and the inner ring cuts 16 break facets. This index gear would also be suitable for square step cuts, emerald cuts, and Portuguese cuts, but wouldn't work for certain other designs such as trillions. The quill also includes an adjustable cheater that would allow this equally spaced index gear to be adjusted one line to the left or one line to the right to stretch the design out for use with longer brilliant designs such as ovals. Otherwise, the indexing mechanism is a little clunky, requiring the cutter to unscrew and rescrew the index lock each time you move to the next facet notch. This would have been a bit slow for the cutter to go around the whole stone. Another innovation that we see in this machine is the implementation of a key dop system so that you can pull out your dop, use the table adapter, and reinsert the dop without losing your index gear orientation. This was likely William Cross's main cutting machine until the late 1920s when he started to collaborate with cutters from Oxford County, Maine to develop a new machine design that would be more repeatable and more precise. Like Merrill's machine before it, this machine can set angles and rotation index, but it has no way to change the height of the faceting head, something that all modern machines can do today. By the end of the 1920s, this group of innovative cutters had started working on a better machine design and it seemed that the first prototype was finished by 1930. This newer machine, later named the Mercapon, was only used by Cross for a year and a half before he died. The later Mercapon machine uses some of the design concepts from this machine, but also adds new innovations that this machine and Merrill's 1888 machine before it don't have. Thanks for watching and come back next time to see the exciting story of the Mercapon machine as well as other faceting machine innovations from around the globe on World of Faceting Machines.